Hello and welcome back to Divox Network. When you refer to the traditional world of car manufacturing, it's all about three things. Engines, dealers and brand. You need to know how to make a good engine. You need to have a good dealer to sell you the car. You need to spend billions to make sure that uh, you have the right brand and that your customer is happy when buying a premium car for a premium price. The new electric dimension of mobility is all about one thing, user experience. Sure, you want to make sure that you're buying state-of-the-art technology, that your car has been built to last and uh, with uh, excellent material. But when you get close to buying an electric vehicle, well, you expect something new, something that will make your entire journey from uh, choosing the car to driving it every day completely different. Today we're going to a test drive uh, the star of user experience, the Tesla Model 3. Model 3 has a sleek design. It's a good mix between Model S in the front and Model X in the rear. It's definitely a four-door sedan, not a five-door hatchback. A rear hatch was ruled out by the full-length glass roof. Our test car is a top-of-the-line Model 3 dual-motor long range, which means uh, an electric motor for each axle, plus the long-range 75 kWh lithium-ion battery pack. The hardware is mostly the same in all-wheel drive Model 3 S's, but you can buy even a more expensive Model 3, the dual motor performance, quickly identifiable by its carbon fiber spoiler, where the motors have been upgraded via software to a combined 450 horsepower, 340 kilowatt, and the inverters have been definitely beefed up. The uh, different user experience starts already from uh, outside the car. To open a Model 3, you use a key card instead of a traditional key or key fob. You can also access the vehicle using your, uh, your smartphone. EV owners are always looking for a better user experience, and they express the desire to also have the option of having a key fob as in Model S and Model X. This option ain't cheap though, and in my opinion, with no passive entry feature, <laughs> not that important either. One of Tesla's main goals with the Model 3 was to design a car that was much cheaper and quicker to build than the labor-intensive S and X. That philosophy is quite obviously in the lack of conventional physical switch gear other than two stalks on the steering column and a pair of jog wheels on the steering wheel itself. Physical controls aren't completely absent. There are actual switches to open and close the windows, buttons to turn on the hazard lights and the map lights, and each door obviously gets a button that opens it. Any other function is controlled via the car's 15.4 inch touchscreen, which is mounted between the front seats and dominates the entire interior. This test car also came with the premium interior, which means among other goodies, 12-way power seats and synthetic leather covering the seats as well as the door cards. I've read many complaints about the car's reliance on this single screen, but I feel perfectly comfortable with it. It's very well designed and it's very easy to use. The left third of the screen is permanently devoted to displaying pertinent information like your speed, the battery state of charge, autopilot status and alerts. The other two thirds is home to the navigation map. The autoplay app slides up from the bottom of the screen over the map, as does the web browser. The audio app includes FM radio, internet radio, and other audio streaming services, as well as Bluetooth streaming from your mobile device. But it doesn't support Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and you cannot stream content over USB yet. The bottom part of the display is assigned to icons that bring you to the car setting menus the audio players, seat heaters, uh, and the climate controls. This won't change position. While some simple tasks only require a single interaction, 
change in the cabin temperature requires at least two, which in my opinion makes it a bit more dangerous than in most other cars. The Model 3's voice recognition is not that great yet. The car only responds to a very limited set of voice commands, and it repeatedly failed to interpret my instructions, something that the uh, Tesla software team uh, had to really work on. Every Model 3 leaves the factory with a forward-looking radar, 8 optical cameras, and 12 ultrasonic sensors. However, all these sensors only enable forward collision warnings, automatic emergency braking, and blind spot monitoring as standard. For an additional fee, Tesla will activate what it refers to as autopilot, which combines adaptive cruise control and lane keeping. But let's be honest, the car as of today is far from being able to drive itself. In this Model 3 long range, the all-wheel drive dual motor configuration is able to generate up to 367 horsepower, 274 kilowatt. This makes it a very quick car with a 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.4 seconds and a new top speed of slightly over 260 km per hour that was just increased from the previous 249 km per hour a couple of weeks ago via software update. This is the great thing about EVs because you can change so many parameters just, uh, well, just with a software update. Look at this. Tesla Model 3 is about 4.7 meters long, 2 meters wide, and 1.4 meters tall. Unlike the models S and X that preceded it, the Model 3 makes extensive use of steel rather than aluminum in its construction, both for the monocoque chassis as well as the car's body panels. The layout is conventional for an EV with the battery pack placed between the axles. The suspension is a double wishbone setup at the front and a multi-link rear. This car mounts coilover dampers rather than the air suspension of the larger Tesla EVs. The front motor is an induction design rated for maximum of 197 horsepower, 147 kilowatt. The rear is a permanent magnet motor rated at 252 horsepower, 188 kilowatt. Dual modal Model 3s are the heaviest configuration of the car, tipping the scales at about 1.8 tons with a 50-50 weight distribution. The one motor configuration only carries the rear motor. The maximum speed varies from 209 km per hour for the standard to over 260 km per hour for the performance. The Model 3 comes with three battery configurations. The long range sports a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack and delivers a maximum range of about 500 kilometers depending on the number of motors pushing the car. The medium range sports a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack and delivers a maximum range of about 400 kilometers. And the standard range sports a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack and delivers a maximum range of 350 kilometers. Tesla stated that the Model 3 carries full self-driving hardware to be optionally enabled at a future date. This Tesla Model 3 test drive was absolutely wonderful and different from anything I'd experienced before. Once you have had this experience, it's unlikely that you will buy another gas fuel car. Trust me, you are in shock for several days. Everything you have learned in a lifetime of driving and riding in gas cars is definitely put into question. Well, I'm not saying that uh, whoever drives a car is going to buy a Tesla Model 3. Of course, uh, there will be people who don't like uh, the look and style of, uh, of a Tesla, or especially here in Europe, don't even know that the car exists. But it's tough to believe that people who have experienced the car and realize it has a total cost of ownership that is better than another comparable premium car, but with a higher performance and an astonishing user experience, will not end up choosing a Model 3.